In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily add touch controls to your Godot. game so that it can be played on a phone or a tablet. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you already have a game you're working on and are just looking for how to add touch controls to it. I have four icons that I'm going to be using for my buttons. I will leave a link in the description on where I got them, so if you want, you can use these same icons. I labeled mine Jump Dark, Left Dark, Right Dark, and Shoot Dark. The first thing we're going to do is add a control node to our scene. So make sure your root is selected, click plus, and let's insert for control. Now we're gonna add a canvas layer to our control. So make sure control is selected, click add, and search for canvas layer. Make sure the canvas layer is under the control node. We're gonna call it touch controls and we're gonna save it as a scene. I'm gonna put mine in the touch control folder and I'm gonna create a scene folder. So it's gonna be touch controls slash scene and the file is called touchcontrol.scene. Now we can go into our touch controls scene. We're going to add four touchscreen buttons to our canvas layer. So select touch controls, click add, and search for touchscreen button. And we're gonna add four of them. The first one we're gonna call left, then right, then jump, and last, shoot. Now we can add our icons to each button and move their position. So first let's select left. We're gonna drag the left dark icon to the texture normal box. And we're gonna come down to transform and we're gonna set the X position to 53 and the Y position to 500. And we're gonna set the scale to 1.25. Next, let's go to the right button and we're gonna repeat the process. We're gonna drag the right dark icon and we're gonna go down to transform. This one, we're gonna set the X to 283, the Y to 500, and the scale to 1.25. Now we can do the jump button. Drag the button over, go to transform. The X on this one will be 850, the Y is 500, and the scale is 1.25. And last, let's do our shoot button. The shoot X is gonna be 1100. The scale, or the Y is gonna be 550. The scale is 125 again. On this one, we're gonna rotate the button though 180 degrees because I think it looks better if it's facing the other way. So there is one setting we need to change so our touch events will work properly. So go to project, project settings. In the general tab, scroll all the way close to the bottom. We're gonna look for input devices and then click on pointing and we're gonna check this one and uncheck this one and then you can close so there are multiple ways to go about adding functionality to our buttons i will show you two different ways but there are other methods the simplest way is to just have it trigger an action from your input map so if we look at our input maps we go to project project settings let's go to input map and you can see we have left right shoot and jump all lowercase so if we go back to the left button and where it says action we can simply type left and then we'll do this for the others also. So right, jump, and then finally shoot. Okay, let's test this out to see if it's working. So as you can see, I can click the right button, I can click the left button, I can jump, and I can shoot. Now there will be times where you may want multiple things to happen on button press, or you may have a more complex scenario for your buttons. For these instances, I like to use signals. So let's do that now. First, we're gonna add a script to our touch controls. We're gonna go up a folder and create a script folder. And we're gonna save it in touch controls slash scripts. And the file is called touchcontrols.gd. And you can create. We're gonna delete these because we don't need these for this. So let's start with the left button. So if you click on the left button over here and then you go to node and in the signals you see you have a pressed and release. We're going to add both of these. And 
And then we also need a reference to each of our buttons inside this script. For this demo, I'm going to add opacity on button press to give the user some feedback that they did press the button. So we'll start with the left button. On button on left press, it'd be left dot modulate dot alpha, and we'll do 0 0.5. And we can actually copy this line. And when they release the button, we're going to put it back to 1.0. Now I'm going to go through and add the same functionality for all the buttons. Okay, let's save this and test it out. So when we click the right button and left button, you can see we get an opacity feedback when we press and then release. And same with jump and then shoot. Now this is just a basic example of how to use signals, but obviously you can use these for more complex scenarios than just calling an input map. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can add a Zelda-like camera pan and zoom to our game. So subscribe and stay tuned. Well, I suppose.